What's up, guys? We are back with the rating climb. We're going to 1400. We have D4. Let's play. I guess we'll play Knight of Six this game. We'll see if we can do another. Oh, we're going to get a, a London. Um, Somebody's banging on the wall. So let's go ahead. We'll just continue with the King's Indian setup. You can play it against the London. Um, one of the nice things is the bishop kind of gets blunted when you play d6. So we'll just go with the sort of standard setup here. And see what happens. Pretty sure one of my uh, kids is banging on the wall. So that, that could be could be a little distracting. Let's go ahead and castle. And then we'll kind of figure out how we want to approach the rest of our development. Bishop to c4, interesting move. So if I want, I can gain a tempo. I'm always looking for, you know, ways to gain tempos in the opening. Uh, the advantage of this is I get a nice clamp on this e4 square, so I can jump my knight in there. And like I mentioned, I do it with tempo. The disadvantage would be it uh, allows white uh, the ability to, you know, put their knight here, unleashes the bishop. So I'm not sure if I want to do that just yet. I might want to save that maybe for later. Um, and so, yeah, with that in mind, I think I will just maybe just play knight b to d7. And what I'm doing here is just getting ready to play e5 or c5. I want to try to break at the center at some point. Queen to b3, interesting move by our opponent. So they're clearly lining up here. Now, right now, I'm not worried at all, right? It's defended, uh, but I am going to ask myself the question, what happens if white kind of continues with that plan of attacking it again? Do I have an easy way to deal with that? And it does look like e6 would be a perfectly playable move. So I don't think I'm super concerned with that. Maybe there could be some sacrifice there. But actually, that's that's kind of an interesting line. Takes, takes, if the knight takes. Because then there's the discovered check and the attack on my queen. So I am going to think through this a little bit. Make sure I don't walk into anything. Um, maybe the easiest way to deal with this would just be to play something like knight to b6. Attack the bishop. And white doesn't have time to go there. I simply trade it off. So that looks like it makes sense to me. Let's go ahead and play knight to b6. Rather than having to calculate all the, those other lines, this looks like a simple solution to force that bishop off of the diagonal. Okay, so we did chase the bishop back. And let's continue thinking about how we want to approach this. I mean, I'm looking at bishop e6 only because, again, it's a tempo move. It's not exactly where I would want my bishop blocking this pawn, but because I can do it with tempo, I am considering it. Um, I'm thinking about maybe playing c5, trying to just gain some space that way. I don't quite have the ability to threaten a fork because I would need another piece to defend that, but maybe if my rook was there. So maybe we could think about something like bishop g4, rook c8, c5, c4. Could be a plan. Um, I, I'm not sure what white's going to do if they're going to castle or if they're just going to wait and maybe try to castle this way. So I'm also thinking about opening up the center while their king is still there. So how can I do that? It's kind of the question. I can't really play e5 right away. Actually, I say that. But uh, upon second glance, maybe I can because when I take back here, the knight can capture though. So I can almost get away with e5 right away. That's an interesting idea. So with that in mind, maybe I'll play rook to e8 and just threaten to play e5. I do want to ask myself, you know, again, knight to g5, do I have a good way to defend this? I think then I could easily play e6. So let's go ahead and we will play rook to e8. Okay, and you know, this is why you want to think through those things because you want to make sure that you, sometimes if you don't think through it, it happens and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't have a way to deal with that, right? But I knew it was coming. I was kind of prepared for it. And I think I'll just play e6. I could also play d5, but then it's going to be hard for me to play e5 and break at the center, which is what I want to do. So I think what I'm going to do is play e6. I'll chase this knight away next move, probably with h6. And then once that threat is dealt with, We'll follow it up with e5 and see if we can't get to white's king. Now, they might castle, but still, it's probably 
a good plan to, you know, open up the center, get my rook involved, and All right, so yeah, like I mentioned, I don't want to leave this threat here forever. And h6 is a um, pretty straightforward move. Kicks the knight away. And now I'm thinking about playing e5. So knight to f3, e5, takes, takes. If the knight takes, I believe I could sacrifice the rook. The point being that after the bishop takes, I would take this bishop. And I might, well, never mind. Doesn't matter, they're playing a different move. Okay. So, I mean, basically what I'm trying to think through is what's going to be the, the best way to position my pieces in the best manner. So does trading make the most sense? D5, maybe just leaving it, allowing white to trade into me and continuing with what I wanted to do with E5. Kind of like the look of that. Takes, takes, we have some pressure here. Starts to open things up. My bishop can then get into the game. If you know white takes here, I can take really either way, and I think I would be fine. So I think I like the look of that the best. So let's go ahead and play e5. <clears throat> and even though it looks like there's a lot of pieces here in between the king and the rook, uh, if we start trading some stuff off, I mean, this could open up very quickly. So I'm keeping an eye on that. Um, now, I think white's going to have time to castle. But, you know, you want to pay attention to this kind of stuff. Because sometimes tactics can just pop up out of nowhere. And you want to make sure you're paying attention to that. Wow. So white is just all about this f7 square. Well, it looks to be a blunder. Uh, the question is, which way do I want to approach it? So th there's a fork, but it's not quite a fork because white could throw in this. But I think what I can do is simply take the knight. If white captures here, I'm going to move my king. Yes, they're going to get my rook, but I'm going to get the bishop and the knight. I'm going to get the bishop and the knight for a rook and a pawn, which if you've watched any chess vibes videos, you've, you'll know I say, you know, usually it's better if you can get the knight and the bishop. I just want to make sure there's not a way to actually win a piece. So like if I could make this fork happen, that would be the best case scenario. The problem is white's going to simply throw in this. I would take or take this way and then they, they have time to save the bishop. Yeah, so I, I don't think I can make that work. Even here, if I play d5, they, there's always this trade, right? So with that in mind, I think I'm going to go for this line. So we'll take the knight and the bishop for the rook and the pawn. And, you know, when I was first starting uh, chess, I didn't realize that, that wasn't a good trade. And so I would just, you know, do the, do the math. Five and one, three and three, it's just six, six and six. So I thought it was an equal trade, but really the knight and the bishop tend to be a little bit better. And hopefully we'll get to see that in this game. So I assume white's going to take my rook. I'm going to simply capture it back. All right. Like I mentioned, we have this, and we gave up that. The knights and bishops are very good middle game pieces. Rooks are kind of end game pieces. So what should probably happen is the next couple of moves through the middle game is really where I'm going to have the strongest advantage, and, and we'll try to take advantage of that. So, Okay. Hmm. I'm thinking about bishop e6 because it's with tempo. I'm also thinking about taking that to kind of put white's king in a sort of a risky spot. I think I'll go ahead and make the trade first and then follow it up with bishop e6. And now we can already start thinking about jumping our knight in and putting some pressure on the king. And I'm always looking for these tempo moves, right? Because it doesn't give white time to use their rooks or do anything else. They have to deal with my threat. I'm, I'm definitely looking at knight to c4. I'm also trying to think, how can I, you know, attack the king? Maybe with my rook or my queen somehow, which would require trading some pawns off. 
But let's go ahead and jump in with the night. I don't want to get too low on time because this seems like a, a game that there's going to have some tricky moments ahead. And I want to leave myself some time to navigate those. So I'm going to go ahead with a kind of a logical move pretty quickly here. Jumping my knight in, forcing white to potentially make an awkward decision. If they have to go backwards, that's awkward because it disrupts the rooks from working with each other. Yeah, there we see it. Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead. Let's capture here, and I'm starting to open up the king. White definitely can't take this way. They have to take this way. Um, and I'm already wondering if I have the ability to sacrifice my bishop here. There's a discover check. The issue is the queen could save itself on e2. Now, so I guess it doesn't quite work. Yeah, not quite. I could also go check here, but the king gets away. Don't quite see, see a way to make it work. But what if I play here first with the idea of potentially take ah, but then my knight's hanging. Yeah, so it doesn't quite quite work in this scenario. So I'm looking for other moves. Um, I'm thinking queen here. Puts pressure over here. Get kind of gets my queen involved where I can attack the king that way. Also, just a simple move like queen f7, preparing to bring my rook somewhere. Looks pretty good. A lot of good options here, and I don't know what the best one is. Queen c6 also kind of looks like it could be interesting. Attack this way. All right, well, we're going to have to make a decision. I'm going to go with queen b5. It just seems like a nice square for my queen. Um, also, it kind of makes way for the rook to come over here and get active. So, and it does, it does have a threat. It's a pretty easy threat to deal with. But if white plays a move like b3, then I'm probably going to jump over here, start taking advantage of the, the dark squares. <coughs> okay. That's interesting. Look at that. That looks very dangerous. So how can we, how can we take advantage of that? I mean, I can just take and win a pawn, which is probably good enough. Let's just check this line real quick. Queen's probably going to block. So because I am getting lower on time, I think I will go ahead and trade this and take the pawn. I do want to make sure that my knight doesn't get trapped, but it looks to me like I'm going to be able to escape here, um, probably with the help of the bishop. And so I think that I can get away with that. Yeah, okay, so here we go. We can escape now with the check. And then we'll jump over here. And probably rook c1. I guess we have to retreat maybe to defend that. I mean, there is rook c8, but that's really not a move I want to play. Okay, white didn't, didn't go for that. So... Well, let's go ahead and try to be a little aggressive here. Put the rook lined up on the king. I'm looking for tactics involving this. Let's go ahead and go back. Save our knight. White has to be careful here because of the, the rook here. Pretty soon we're going to take this pawn, I think, unless you know white does something like that. Bishop f5 looks pretty good as well. Unleashing the rook this way. b4, okay. So can I take it now is the question, followed by check, and we win the rook. I think I can. Looks like a pretty basic tactic, so let's go ahead and make that happen. Here you go. Exactly what I was talking about. White had to be careful, and they, they did not. So we're going to grab the rook next move. That's a safe one to pre-move. And now we're just up a piece. I'm looking for opportunities to trade. I'm looking for weaknesses. Uh, let's go ahead and save the bishop. So we'll bring it back here. This is my immediate threat. All right, let's go ahead and defend with our rook. Notice I don't want to defend it this way. 
because then my rook is just stuck not doing anything. This way, I'm defending, but I'm also controlling stuff over here. So this is definitely a better move, I think. Still threatening this. All right, I'm going to just play a quick move here, um, kind of getting my pawn, you know, off of the diagonal. If the rook ever comes over here, it's not going to be able to attack anything. And I'm thinking on my opponent's time, I'm thinking what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go here, and actually, we almost have a tactic. Takes and check. Doesn't quite work because of f4. It doesn't quite work. Ah, but I can take here. Okay. So there's a nice little tactic for you. We take the pawn first, we follow it up with this, and then we have the, the skewer here to pick up the rook at the end. So it turns out to be just a big trade, which is exactly what I want when I'm trying to simplify the game and you know when I'm low on time. So there we go. And now I'm I'm looking for how can I get a pass pawn as quickly as possible. So let's let's attack this guy, and then we'll start bringing our king over. Probably white's going to defend. And then the king comes over. Okay. Come up here and take these guys. Um, and it's it should be pretty straightforward. <coughs> hmm. So no need to panic. Uh, it's a pretty easy, you know, win. Um, move quickly and just get the, the pass pawn going, and it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and push this forward, get rid of this pawn, just to make sure that white has no counterplay. And normally I'm not going to be sacrificing a bishop for a pawn, but in this case, well not right now, but as soon as I have to, that's what I will be doing. Never mind. Uh, but if white would have went there, I would have sacrificed it anyway, just because... Uh, I just I just need a queen and it's game over. So here we go. And the only thing that we have to watch out for is that we don't stalemate. So you always want to make sure that you see at least, you know, a place for your opponent's king to move to. Uh, that's kind of the easiest way to do it. So every time I'm moving, I'm checking and I'm seeing places that the king can move to. So as long as you see that, you know that there's no stalemate. Let's go here. Go check. So this is a moment where I have to be careful, like if I were to play this, right? I'm going to go here. I see that the king can move here, and I see the checkmate, and there we go. All right? So don't need to panic. You just got to make smart decisions because a lot of players could easily stalemate in that situation. Okay, let's update this. 48. And let's do a quick game review. Okay, 90, we played pretty well. Brilliant move. What was the, oh, the knight takes d4 was the brilliant move. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, our opponent was just fixated on this f7 square. So much so that they were even willing to go for a not so good trade, right? And you can see here, the engine is saying this was the best move to go for this line. And it's saying 3.1 advantage for black. So the knight and the bishop... They're just going to be better than a rook and a pawn in most, uh, in most cases. All right. So I don't think there was much else. Yeah, I messed up here. Let's see. I wonder if white actually did have a way to trap the, the knight. So king to d2. Trapping the knight temporarily would have been a good move. And if I were to play bishop f5, trying to... Ah, f3, e4. So knight d3, e4. I would have had to take here. Wow, it was pretty. It was pretty wild. But White almost had a, a way to trap the knight, like Rook A three. Then the knight leaves, and then I lose a bishop, and we end up with this position, which Engine says is actually equal. Okay. Anyway, let's play another game. We're gonna try to get to fourteen hundred. All right, we're black again. Let's play D five this time. Just mix it up a little bit. See another London. All right. Let's just develop our pieces. And I think the typical way is you're supposed to play c5 and, and attack over here with the queen and stuff. 
But the other way to play against this is to just not overthink it and just play solid moves. So I'm just going to pick a setup here that I've used before, and I'm going to put my pieces on these squares. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to fee and kettle my bishop over here, and we're just playing chess. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out a way to punish my opponent for playing the London. It's just, a, it's kind of a solid opening. So a lot of times what I like to do is say, all right, fine, let's just get past the opening, get to the middle game, and we'll start playing some chess from there. So that's basically what I'm, what I'm doing here. We'll go bishop d6. I'm okay with the doubled pawns in this case because two reasons. Number one, it'll open up the C file for my rook. Number two, this pawn here on d6 is now going to support e5. And e5 is kind of a nice move to gain some center control. If white ever tries to take me, I'm just taking it back. So here we go. And you can see how these clump of pawns in the center can be difficult for our opponent to deal with. We're already threatening e4. I think our opponent will see that. But it is a threat that they have to deal with. They play e4 themselves. Uh, one, two, three, only two defenders. Now, I am going to be a little cautious because my king is here. I don't want some crazy rookie one causing me problems. But it looks to me like we just take this and we win a piece. If they take, we take, they take, we take. Uh, rookie one, we just move. Takes, takes, takes. And we would have time to castle. So it seems like a blunder our opponent was playing a little too quickly there i believe and i'm going to just take it i'm going to take with the pawn because i want to get the fork which is going to guarantee that i win the piece so i've i've checked it i made sure i wasn't going to get into trouble uh, with my king and here we go somebody said don't take it <laughs> i'm taking it i'm taking it so again um it doesn't really matter it's just a free piece so i think we'll go ahead with the stick with the knight Try to keep the bishop, generally speaking. Bishops are slightly better, especially uh, in an open position where they have, you know, nice diagonals that they can control. And you can just see we have three and our opponent only has two. So as long as we don't get into trouble here, uh, we're going to be just fine. And I'm, I'm ready to castle next move. So they take here. Okay. Um, again, just looking for some crazy stuff, but I don't think it's a problem. We'll go ahead and recapture. Okay. They are threatening to take me. So we have a couple of things. We can defend it would be one option. So let's just say knight c5, knight f6, f5. Another option would be we just retreat. Knight to c5 here or knight to f6 here. We allow this and then we castle. The issue with this is that we're, you know, we're giving up a pawn here. I'm going to give up that pawn anyway. I don't know that it necessarily matters. F5. I kind of want to play F5, but then I'm also kind of like, am I going to be able to get my king to safety if I do that? That's, that's my concern. <clears throat> that's my only concern. So... If I do this, we have to watch out for bishop checks here. Yeah, so maybe the simplest and easiest thing is just to go back, give up the pawn, and then castle. And I think we're just fine. Let's just do that. We'll keep it simple. I got my piece. I'm pretty happy. And I just, I don't want to get into any trouble here. So this looks pretty obvious to me. We just castle. Of course, I don't want to take and allow the queen to come in because then I can't castle and, and then I might actually get into big trouble. So go ahead and castle now. And... Probably rook d1. We do have to be a little bit careful. The rook line is lined up with our queen. Um, you know, we don't want to fall into some check and lose our queen. But I think we're going to have a couple of options. Maybe even just rook e8 piling up on this guy might be the simplest thing. Also, creating a pin of our own. Yep, all right. So, you know, I just said rook to e8, but I'm also thinking queen e7. The reason that I'm I'm liking queen e7 is it just totally gets out of that rook's x-ray there. 
But rookie eight is also a nice move because it the pin is more powerful. So I mean let's let's say what is white gonna do if I go here? They're not gonna take because they lose the queen. I don't think. Yeah, no. What are they gonna do? Play f4, probably? Then we take. There's a check. We take, we lose our queen, but we get this, but we lose this. So what's happening there? Let me make sure I'm understanding this. I'm getting a knight. I'm getting a bishop. I'm getting a rook. So I'm getting those three pieces. I'm losing my queen and I'm losing a knight. So I'm getting a rook and a bishop for a queen. Not terrible, but alternative would be something like queen e7, in which case I'm not going to be losing my queen anymore. White still has to either defend or move the knight and allow a trade. Yeah, that looks, maybe that looks better. So let's, there's still f4, but then, yeah, then we would have time to bring some other pieces. Okay, so I think I am going to go with queen e7. Could be wrong, maybe rook e8 was better, but I think this is okay. I mean, even just taking, allowing this, taking, taking, would be pretty playable, but let, let's just, let, we'll go with this one. Okay, rookie one. So now I think, you know, since I'm ahead, um, I want to trade as much as possible. Because if we go into an endgame where I'm up a piece, I'm pretty happy. So probably I'm going to take with the queen to encourage the trade. Now, white doesn't have to do that. They can move somewhere else. But then I would simply move my queen away. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've simplified. And let's just see which rook do we want to bring over. Let's just go with this one to start out with, rook to e8. Trying to trade some more pieces. Wasn't that a blunder, knight to d7. Knight to d7. Um... Yeah, actually, you you might be right because if I take here, he throws in the uh, the trade, and if I take with the queen, we we run into the. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So I mean, it's not a terrible blunder because we would still get the the rook and the bishop. But yes, I think you're right. It wasn't the the most accurate move. All right, we'll take back with the rook. <coughs> okay, we had to deal with this. Now, the rook can't come to the 7th rank right away because of my knight. So that's a really, really good thing. That's the good news. Um, I do have to be careful for the back rank, though. I don't really want to allow that. So I guess what we do is play rook c8. And just go here. I do want to fix my back rank problem as quickly as possible. So king to f8 is probably going to be the way I'm going to do it. I could also push a pawn. But king to f8, what I like about that is... You know, it's the end of the game. Active king is important, and this gives me the ability to use my king, um, you know, as the game goes on. So I think I like this. So what I'm looking for now is, uh, well, I'm looking if I can take that pawn. There's a check. I move my king. Uh, what's going to happen? The knight's covering these. So the only move I might be concerned about would be something like rook b8. Then I can just move my bishop somewhere. Probably I can just take the pawn. I was going to say I could, you know, look for a trade, but I, th I think I will just take the pawn. Back king is going to go there. If he attacks over here, I'm not concerned. I can push the pawns forward. Um, da -da -dum. Yeah, I don't see anything, so let's go ahead and take the pawn. <laughs> All 
All right, we'll go here. Yeah, kind of like I thought. And I can simply just move the bishop. I could even just come back if I want. Um, be another option. I was thinking about bishop d5, though. Yeah, I think bishop d5 is good. I like that it's defended by the knight. Uh, it's also stopping the rook from doing any shenanigans to try to attack this. Okay. Can I win a pawn here? Another pawn by just attacking this guy? Kind of looks like I can. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just trying to be careful, make sure I don't blunder any pieces. But... Looks like uh, we can just take this guy. One thing, when you get to these end games and you're up like a piece like this, you want to try to not trade pawns if you're the side that's ahead. Because if you trade all the pawns off, you imagine if all the pawns were just instantly traded, I would have a hard time winning the game. Yeah, I have an extra piece, but a rook, a bishop, and a knight against a rook and a bishop, I'm going to have a hard time checkmating. So I'm going to need at least one pawn uh, to become a queen. And so you don't want to trade all the pawns off. Uh, so just keep that in mind. He wants to push here, which is actually a potentially a good move. But I think what I'm going to do is stop that. Because if he chases my knight away, then all of a sudden I have to be careful for stuff like this. And not that it's that big of a deal. But all right, now I think we can safely take this. We could go for checkmate if we put the knight on e4. Or maybe push the pawn forward. I'm thinking about that as well. There's a mating pattern here. Okay, f4, that looks like a free pawn to me. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. I am going to go for check, because this is going to force the king to make an awkward decision. This is checkmate immediately. This is bad. This is not really where you want your king to be either. So they just go for the, the worst one. And there we have a checkmate. So, all right, let's check the game review. We did have a blunder which I guess was probably queen e7, but we'll see. All right, we played pretty well. Let's see what the blunder was. Hey, queen e7. So you guys were right. And yeah, knight takes d7 was the move. So in my mind, what I was thinking was that I could trade the queens and then recapture the knight or something. But that, yeah, that doesn't actually work because white could simply throw in a check and then take back. And now we actually have this, this equal position. So what I probably would have done is just take it with my queen, but then it walks into this, and yeah. Oh, there's queen d3 at the end of it all, forking these guys. Ooh, yeah, so that was a big mistake on my part. So I probably should have went with my first instinct, which is rook e8. Yep, that's, that was the best move. And just kind of counter pin white's knight here. So, and this is actually really good. I'm glad this happened. Whenever you put your pieces on squares that are undefended, like I did here, this is undefended, and it's in line with the queen, that's like a sign. There might be a tactic for your opponent. So I should have really been more careful before playing a move like that, right? Uh, you compare that to a move like rookie eight. Well, I'm not doing that. This is defended. Everything's, you know, defended. There's much less chance that there's a, a tactic that's going to hurt you than when you play a move like queen e7. So I definitely messed that up, um, but our opponent did not see it. And, you know, this is a good example, too. Like, if this person wants to get past 1350, they somehow need to try to find these these tactics, right? And that's what's going to really help them get to 14, 15, 16, 1700, right? So, all right, let's play another game. 1390. So probably one or two more games will put us at 1400. Let's see. Did I update the... I don't think I did, right? 149? Yeah, I don't think I did. Okay. So we were going to try to play the Kali. Actually, that didn't work out last time. Let's play e4 again. I'm going to try to play something else. Let's try to play... Let me see. Let me see. I think somebody had request... Oh, e6. Come on. I was going to go for a Halloween gambit, but never mind. Not anymore. Well, d6. I, I don't know. I guess you just play some normal moves. Developing your bishop to a good diagonal. Let's go ahead and castle. Get the king out of the center. And <clears throat> rook to e1. I'm going to defend the pawn that way. And if we ever trade this pawn off in the future, it's going to unleash my rook. 
So I'm thinking about c3 and d4 just to strike at the center that way. Um, I think I will do that. C3 is a, you know, usually a pretty good move. Let's the queen out, supports d4. You do have to be careful if you were to need that square for your knight to defend on e4. But I already have the rook kind of doing that job, and I didn't see a way that black could attack it again. So I felt comfortable uh, playing that. All right. Let's go ahead and continue here with um, d4. All right, so of course I'm going to check what happens if we take, but I don't like the fact that the knight comes in and is attacking my pinned knight over here. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I could play h3 to see if we can get the bishop to trade, but it's probably just going to go back. And it's a question of, is that a useful move to me or not? Um, I don't actually know. I don't actually know. Because sometimes it's useful because it controls the square. And at the end of the game, you don't have back rank mate problems. Other times, it's not useful because you create a weakness here that maybe your opponent could take advantage of. I'll play it. I don't see how black can immediately take advantage of that, so I will play it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily know that it mattered too much there. Okay. So bishop g5 is a move. Bishop e3 is a move. Even just leaving the bishop, I guess, could be a possibility for now. It's not really going to be doing too much on these squares. So maybe I will just do that. We'll just kind of delay, and we'll play knight here. And I can get away with this, because it's kind of a slower-paced game right now. There's no fireworks. There's no crazy, like, I'm about to get checkmate. I'm trying to develop my pieces as fast as I possibly can in this position, right? It's We're both kind of playing slowly and kind of calmly, and so it's a very different situation. That's why I'm okay with temporarily blocking this bishop. All right, so I don't want to give up this bishop for that knight question of where do I want the bishop to go? Here, or here, or here, or here. Um, I like the look of this, so we'll just keep it here for now. Kind of dominates the knight to anywhere that the knight would like to go to. My bishop is controlling, and I also get the bonus that I'm still attacking stuff over here, so I like the look of that. Okay, so now I'm going to see, can I actually win a pawn? So if I were to play g4, chase the bishop back, can I snag this guy? and jump in with my knight and be okay? And I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes. And this is kind of another reason why throwing in h3 earlier, I guess you could say, is a nice idea, because now I have this possibility. I, I do want to check what happens if black sacrifices a piece. I'm not really concerned. I don't think they're set up to follow that up with any serious threats. But most likely they're going to go back, and then we take... Do they have any other moves? They can't take here because it's defended twice. And my queen is also defended by the bishop. Yeah, it looks it looks to me like it's just a free pawn. So we're going to go ahead and play g4. Now, I'm committing, you know, that my king is going to be weak. But getting a center pawn is a significant trade-off. And I think in this case, it's worth it. Um, also, you know, the fact that black black's king is here and they're not really set up to attack me. I, I think I can I can do this. So let's go ahead. Just again, just checking real quickly, make sure I'm not blundering anything. But here we go. And I'm even thinking about f4, f5, just really being aggressive here. Okay, well, I can't play it now. But we could take the bishop. Um, black would have to take this way because of the pin. Or we leave it, like I mentioned, and try to play f4, maybe move the king and play f4, f5, try to trap it. Yeah, I think I will go ahead and trade, because um, it relieves some of the pressure on this pawn. And... I don't want my knight to become a target, you know, by some of some black's moves like this. So I'll go ahead and trade it. Now I'm thinking about moving this knight. I think it's time to get the bishop out. We got our pawn. Uh, we've traded off some stuff. We, we can't leave this indefinitely. So maybe knight to f3 or knight to f1. Where's black's queen most likely going to go? c7 or e7? 
I don't think they're going to trade. Could, but I don't think they will. Let's say here. Would I rather my knight be on f3 or f1? Or here to pile up on this. You can go to g3 from there. But on f3, it supports a push forward. Kind of a tricky position. I guess I could also go here and try to trade some pieces over here as well. Hmm. Yeah, maybe f1 makes sense. It kind of helps defend some of these dark squares, and I do like the ability to go knight to g3. So, okay. And of course, if the queen trades, I'll take back with the bishop so that I don't lose the defender of the pawn. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead. We'll play knight to f1. And the, the primary reason I'm doing this is I want to get this bishop out. So bishop g5, bishop f4, bishop e3 uh, are going to be moves on my radar next. My opponent's knights are kind of not doing so great. Um, if you notice, they don't really have a lot of squares to go to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep that happening. I just have to be careful of the dark squares right now because the bishop and the queen. Oh, and white does trade. So okay, I'm gonna take, like I said, taking with the bishop because I need my rook to defend this pawn. So that's kind of an important, important move there. But now we're going into an endgame up a pawn. We've got four against three. So I'm pretty happy with that. And yeah, feeling pretty good. All right, so there's a threat here. We can defend it with knight to g3. We can also defend it with bishop to c2. Well, um, I'm going to go bishop c2. And the reason is I'm not sure if I, I might want my knight to go here or maybe help support the bishop to go there. The bishop, I'm, I'm pretty sure, isn't going to want to stay on d1. So that's why I'm choosing this one instead of like knight g3. I really want this square for my rook. Okay, so the knight's obviously attacking here. We can't just move our bishop or we lose the pawn. I guess I could play rook b1 and come down here. Actually, that might be playable. Could also play king g2 and f3 just to really solidify these light squares. It takes a lot of the pressure off of here that I'm dealing with right now. So that's not a bad idea. I could, I could of course, play b3. The knight might jump over here. I could play, and I can't play f4 because it's pinned. Yeah, I kind of do like king to g2 because it gets out of the pin and it gives me options with this pawn. But let's just verify that this knight has nothing to do. Not really. Everything is controlled. Everything's defended. So yeah, I will play king to g2. And... Maybe b3 and then f4, e5 would be very aggressive and gain a bunch of space. More passive approach would be something like f3, just kind of solidifying all of these light squares. I'm expecting black's going to go here, so I'm going to start thinking if they play that, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Let's say we play b3, f4, and the knight jumps in. Is that a problem for me? Not really a problem, but then this pawn, let's see. So b3, knight here, f4, there takes. And I have some different things that are hanging. I don't really like the look of that. So I think I will go ahead and play f3. I think I will. I'm trying to relieve... Black has a pretty aggressive position, I will say. Even though we're up a pawn, black, oh, look at all of Black's pieces are doing very well right now. And I'm still kind of trying to catch up because of this problem. So I'm trying to play very carefully, and I think that the best way to do that right now is just to solidify these pawns. Kind of makes these guys not really do much freeze up these pieces if I need to use them for something other than defending this pawn, right? So that's kind of what I'm going for. Now, it weakens the dark squares, but my knight here is, is doing a good job with the bishop. Okay, so black's still going to try to do this. Probably a decent idea, but they relieve the pressure on this pawn. It means I can now safely move my bishop somewhere. So here or here or here. Uh, 
Um, both of these moves look pretty good to me. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to play. I guess the bishop is the most annoying piece to me right now. The knight's kind of not doing a whole lot. So with that in mind, let's go bishop e3. Try to trade these guys off. And now I'm pretty happy that I can bring this rook over pretty soon. I'm expecting knight to d3 maybe. I'm going to just trade it. My bishop is not doing a whole lot behind these white pawns. So I will trade it for that knight. Follow it up with the rook coming over. Okay, so black goes back. I think that is a pretty decent trade to make. Like I said, those bishop, that bishop's been very annoying for a long time. So let's go ahead and trade it off. And then let's bring the rook over, like I mentioned. Now we have control over the file as well. And I'm starting to feel like we're getting a nice uh, grip on the position. Okay. Threatening here. Um, can pretty easily deal with that. I'm also going to check... No, I don't think I can't. I was gonna see if I could like trap the knight, but it doesn't doesn't work. Black has enough defenders. So probably we have to play b3, I guess. Just to not lose the pawn. So let's play b3. Oh, I have a minute and 38 seconds. So I have to go a little bit faster. So yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. Um, okay, so the bishop's under attack. Let's go ahead and play bishop d3. Now black's knight looks kind of silly just sitting over there. It can't really do much. Um, and yeah, that's fine. So what's the plan going to be here? I'd like to trade off some rooks or at least get this rook somewhere better than what it's doing right now. Maybe it's time to start pushing the pawns. This is where I have the pawn majority. So that's usually where you want to like push forward. The time is a bit of a, a, a bit of an issue for me though. And yeah, thinking through how we're going to do this. All right, we're going to play f4. It takes away a, an important square for the knight. They do have that one still. But I think we can just go back here. Ah, but then we lose the pawn. Hmm, that's a good move. It's a good move. I'm trying to see if there's a way to not lose a, the pawn here, but I don't think that I'm seeing it. Maybe it's rook e3. Maybe that's the move. I don't like stepping into the pin, but I'm trying to hold on to everything. So if I can get my king here, and then we have to just figure out how to get this, this rook. Ooh. That doesn't... No, that's just a blunder. So caught a break there. He caught a break. I don't want to let the rook in, so my knight and bishop are doing a good job there. Let's use the king to help defend all of the weaknesses. And now that I have the extra piece, I desperately would like to trade some stuff off. So I'm going to try to bring the rook over next move. And either trade or get control of the file. Okay, white played a good move. They stopped me from doing that. Let's play b4. Trace the knight away. And then we can go there next move. They go here, we have a4, they are going to trade. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's just a question of how do I get a pass pawn to um, get a queen here. So we're just going to kind of start advancing our pawns as carefully as we can um, without losing them. So, you know, just keeping everything defended, trying not to create a lot of weaknesses. And probably I'll push this pawn forward next. Okay, now I'm going to go here. Go here. Knight's coming in. It's a pretty good, pretty good square for the knight. Let's keep going with our king. If I can get down here, these are going to be pretty easy to, to take with my king. I'm also going to think about where can I put this knight. Maybe bring it to e3. So here we go. I don't know how black's going to stop us from coming in. 
once we get rid of these, this guy is, is home free. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. There we go. King's actually a really good piece at gobbling up pawns. So, okay. And here we go. We have two pawns now that we can start pushing. Go here. I think that's a safe pre move. Not really worried about this anymore. I'm more concerned with getting a queen. Well, this will force a trade of the pesky knight. And now we can just gobble up the pawns. Probably get another queen, depending on where the king goes. That's just checkmate. So that was close. If our opponent didn't blunder that knight, I think they were going to be able to hold on. And I was going to have a hard time winning that with, with the time remaining. So props to our opponent. Uh, they played very well. Played very well. So let's let's actually... Take a look at this game. 1398. So we have one more game to play, but I want to I do want to look at this game review here. Okay, so we yeah, we played good and they played I mean they played really well. 80 83 is very good for uh, you know, 13 1400. So sorry, let me turn this off so you can see the, the game here. So okay, opening I think was fine. Let's see. Was this a mistake? It was a mistake. Um, yeah, okay. Engine says this was fine. You get the free pawn. Great. And then knight to f1, it doesn't love. Yeah, so basically what happened here, guys, was I won the pawn, but in exchange for that, I had to create some weaknesses. And then even after the queen trade, black's pieces just all kind of landed on very natural attacking squares. I mean, look at this. All of them. And whenever that happens, you have to defend very, very carefully, which is why I was, you know, having a rough time and getting into time trouble. And then right here, I was feeling like, yeah, and, and the engine actually says I didn't have an advantage here. It's an equal position. Yeah, our opponent played a really good, really good move here. And there must have been some, oh, wow. Rook takes e4. There it is. There's the tactic. I can't take with the bishop or I lose this guy. And if I take here, I still lose this guy because of it. Wow. So that was how black could just win the pawn back. Yeah. And I would have been in trouble. Instead, they blundered here. So really good example of, you know, a lot of 13, 1400s. This is what you're going to see. They play really well. They play really well. They play really well. And then there's that one moment. There's that one moment in the game where something like this happens, right? This person just missed that I could take it and it would defend the, the pin. And all of a sudden the game, the game was over at that point, really, right? So if you guys can learn to play 100% of the game without making these kind of mistakes, that's what's going to take your, your game to the next level, right? So, but yeah, they, they played really well overall. And they put up a fight here. Active king at the end, super important. Notice my opponent didn't bring their king over in time. If they brought it over and kept my king from coming in, it would have been much more difficult for me to figure out how to win. But because they allowed me to do that, then I just gobbled up the pawns, and it was pretty straightforward, right? So keep that in mind. Like, probably right around here. They created this kind of a blockade, and then here, immediately, bring the king over, and come up here, and, and you know, stop my king from coming in. But I had a more interesting game, I think. All right, last game, guys. This will put us over 1,400, assuming we don't lose on time. <laughs> All right, let's let's try to play a little bit faster. We'll play e4, knight f3. We're gonna attack the center, and I will try to play a Halloween gambit. Somebody had requested that, so let's see if we can let's see if we can do it. Knight to f6 is what we're looking for. Knight to f6. That will allow us to go into the Halloween gambit. All right, so Halloween gambit. Uh, if you're not familiar, knight takes e5. Looks crazy. Why are we giving up this pawn? Well, it's because d4 and 
basically we just get a whole bunch of tempos chasing the knights around and a big center and that that's the trade-off now is it good eh, it's probably not against magnus carlson or stockfish but 13 1400 absolutely you can play this absolutely now unfortunately for me um i'm gonna play e5 keep attacking unfortunately for me <laughs> I haven't looked at this in a while. I have a video on the channel where I go through all these tricky lines, but I don't remember all my videos. So that's that's a problem. Okay, interesting move. I don't think it's a good move. And the reason I don't think it's a good move is because this bishop now is stuck, which means the king is stuck. You're not going to be able to castle that way. And maybe they're going to try to castle this way, but I don't think that's a great move. Now, it does solve the problem temporarily, but I'm going to... Um, I'm just debating which knight. I mean, sorry, which knight? Which bishop? I'm debating which bishop I want to move. Because both of these kind of accomplish the same thing. They break the pin, which unleashes the attack on the knight. Now, the knight can't really go anywhere. Can't go to any of these squares, which is really nice, which means it's going to have to go backwards. So would I rather have this bishop here or this bishop here? I think... Hmm, I don't actually know. I'm going to use this one. Because maybe I want to put this one on like one of these other squares. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to go on e2. So let's let's do this way. So knight, knight g8 has to happen now. And we can do this in a couple of different ways. We can play h4, trying to harass the other knight, which also doesn't have a lot of places to go. It, okay, yeah, I guess, I guess that's a move. Wasn't really thinking through that. Okay, that's that's fair. Black says, I'm just going to give back the piece and try to go on with the game. Okay, that's fair. So they're still up a pawn, but we have the lead in development now. So, okay, interesting, interesting try by our opponent. I think that's fair. So probably what I'm going to do is play bishop e2 and try to castle right away and get this rook to the e-file as quick as I can. Um, what else could I play? Yeah, I don't really know what else. So I'm going to do that. I'll play bishop e2. Castle immediately. I'm expecting probably something like bishop b4. <laughs> and on bishop b4, I'm, there's two ways we could do this. We could just castle and ignore it. Black wants to be greedy and take a pawn. They can do that. I'm going to be happy. Bishop c5, okay. Yeah, I guess that seems like a decent move. They want to just trade. They just want to trade. Um, hmm. Okay. So yeah, I think I mean I think our opponent's actually playing this pretty well. And I don't have too much of an option here. I mean, I, I kind of have to take it. If I don't take it, black's just gonna take me, which looks worse. But I think I do have to take. And I think I will go ahead and castle. And we're down a pawn. We have a little bit of a lead in development. I don't know if it's quite enough. So we're probably slightly behind at this point. Um, but I think there's still a little bit of, of compensation. Now, I, I, unfortunately, I'm not going to have time to create pressure on, on Black's King. If they're smart, they're probably just going to castle. And yeah, unfortunately, we can't really attack them there. So we have to figure out how to make, you know, counterplay in other ways. So let's let's see how to do that. Um, I'm going to go queen d2. I want to bring the rook over. And this might be a situation where we kind of have to just wait for black to make a mistake. Because right now, I mean, look at their position. There's really like no weaknesses. They, they've, they're doing a fantastic job of not creating any weaknesses. So can't do a lot here um, unless they, they, you know, give us a target, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So in the meantime, I'm going to try to position my pieces on the best squares and see what happens. Hmm. Queen to F5. All right, so let's go ahead and Get the rook on the open file there. Or half open file, I should say. 
I mean, I can play bishop d3, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. I mean, you can just move somewhere. Um, yeah, it's a good move. Play rook to e1. And maybe bishop f3. Maybe I'll just sit the bishop there to kind of put some pressure along this diagonal. And you could say this is kind of the risk of playing a, a gambit like the Halloween Gambit. If your opponent knows what they're doing and they don't, you know, play any bad moves, it's it's kind of hard to get into a good position from it, right? Because it's, but usually there's, I mean, this is a this is a rare situation where our opponent played the opening so well. This is pretty rare. So, okay, so they're threatening this. Um, we could trade, or we could play bishop f3 like I was mentioning. On queen to h5, I could play h3 and I would be happy. So I think this is a pretty safe move. Let's go bishop f3. Putting some pressure here. Knight to e5, that's a pretty good move as well, I guess. So let's see, we can gain a tempo on the queen. I don't really want to trade more stuff off because I'm I am down the pawn. I'm gonna to try to keep some of these pieces on the board. So let's go here. Just gain a tempo. Maybe I can bring my knight in and maybe we start to see the opportunity for some tactics pop up. I do like how my bishop is. Kind of keeping black defending there, right? If they try to move this, I could potentially grab a pawn. Now it might not be that great because the rook might come in and take my pawn, but um, we'll see. Let's see where the queen's going to go. Okay, so that gives me the opportunity to jump in with the knight. I'm going to do it. Uh, it's threatening this and this. Now the queen can go back. But that looks like a defensive place for the queen. And I'm kind of feeling like I'm gaining a little bit of momentum. Um, but still not really seeing any, you know, specific targets, which is pretty rare. I mean, it's, it's pretty rare when you, there's like nothing to attack. Maybe over here, so, something, if we can migrate the queen over somehow... I guess queen d8 has to be played. No, queen here. Okay. Uh, well, all of a sudden, that doesn't look good for black. All of a sudden. Because when I take here, it messes up the pawn structure, and I get my pawn back. And I feel like I'm back in the game. So, interesting. Well, I think I'm going to do that. Snag the pawn, and actually now this pawn's going to fall, and everything is sort of falling apart, and all of a sudden we have some weaknesses. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say too much. I don't know, but there are some people. I will say there are some people who like study a bunch of openings, and they're good at openings, but then they kind of fall apart. I don't know if that's what we're seeing here, or if our opponent just, I don't know. I'm going to grab this pawn, and <clears throat> yes, there is a fork here, but then my rook jumps over here, and I'm taking all kinds of stuff, so I'm pretty happy with that. But I think this is a good example of, you know, sometimes your opening plan doesn't quite work out, you get in a worse position, and one of the best things to do is not panic, just like say, okay, I'm just going to play the best moves I can. I'm going to sit tight and I'm going to wait for my opponent to mess up. And if, I mean, if your opponent doesn't mess up and they play like stockfish for 20 moves in a row, well, yeah, yeah you're going to lose. But a lot of times this, that's the best chance that you have. And I think that's what we saw here in this game. All right, knight to g6. So he's defending this way. 
Okay. Uh, well. I'm look again, I'm kind of looking for weaknesses or, or things that I could potentially set up here. And I might just play C4. I don't know, just to like put my pawns like this and then have something to support the knight or the bishop on D5. Well, let's, let's do that. I might actually slide this rook over as well to just create a battery. Batteries can be pretty powerful. Maybe g3 makes some sense too. Kind of shuts down the knight a little bit. And I don't have to worry about back rank mate problems. Could also be a good idea. Okay, well that looks like a free pawn. Takes, takes, takes. Uh, there, will, there would be knight f4 afterwards, but doesn't really look like too much of a problem. Let's go ahead and grab the pawn. Yeah, now bishop d5 looks like a nice square for the bishop. We've got a thread here. I wonder if that's the simplest thing. Get rid of the knight and then just invade with the rooks. Trade them off and go into an endgame. Up some pawns. Nah, probably don't want to give up this amazing bishop, honestly, though. It's just so good. I think I will play g3. Just try to shut down the knight. The only reason that I'm thinking about giving this up is because it simplifies into an endgame that I'm pretty confident I could win up two pawns. But generally speaking, that's a that's just a bad decision, right? This bishop is so much better than that knight right now, so I really shouldn't probably trade that. Okay. Um... I could take, but then it kind of brings black king to a good square so i think what i'll do instead is just go bishop d5 and allow black to trade into me brings my rook into a good square and doesn't let his king come forward okay and here we go we'll take with the rook okay that doesn't really threaten anything it's already defended I think I'm going to play f4. And the point is, number one, it's pushing a pass pawn, which is always a good thing. Also nice and defended. Also lets my king have a nice, easy path to the center. And maybe I'll use it to attack the knight and force the knight back. So a lot of reasons. Like right now, I'm thinking about going here. But I think what I'll do instead is just bring my king. Um, king in the end game is super important. And you don't want to leave your king just sit over here uh, in a position like this. You want to use it as, as quickly as you can. So unless you have like a clear target to go and take or to do something with your other pieces, if they're on good squares, just leave them and go get your king in the game. So that looks like a free pawn. Yes, there's a check, but I have rookie too. So I'll take it. And there we go. Rook to e2 just keeps everything nice and defended. Notice this pawn is, you know, really shutting down the knight's ability to move anywhere, at least this pawn chain. And black is in trouble. Okay, so what I like to do in these kind of situations is find a place where everything is defended. So let's go here. Bishop defends the pawn, the pawn defends the bishop, um, and I don't have to worry about anything there. A6, I'll probably just play A4. Yes, uh, he could take, but then I could even just take with the bishop. Keeps my pawns looking nice. Okay, A5. Um, let's continue. I mean, let's just continue bringing our king, right? Why not? Once we get to D4, the rook has to leave. And where's it going to go? 
I don't know. I don't want to take this. I would totally mess up my pawn structure and I'd lose this. But what I can do is just leave it there and allow black to just take me. All right. So at this point, I'm um, thinking about f5 because where's the knight going to go? Looks like it could be pretty annoying for black. Also thinking about just starting to push these guys down the board. Like now, maybe now's the time. So we'll play a4. If I needed to defend it, I could always play b3. Um, of course, like I mentioned here, I'm just taking this. So I'm not really concerned with that. Don't really see any other weaknesses that black can attack. So I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, rook check, not a problem. Let's um, keep going with the king. Which way do I want to go? Let's go here. Just in case I want to come back this way and defend this maybe. But also this is kind of the path that I most likely would want to take. Here we go. And again, we see this idea of using the king to hunt down pawns at the end of the game so that you can easily get queens. Okay, we'll recapture that. And I guess the simplest thing is to just defend it. Probably gonna go like here and attack the pawn. I'm just gonna push it forward. Hmm. Nope, okay. Let's go king a5. Here we go. Same plan. Okay, we'll take that. And he defends. Uh, <coughs> probably the easiest thing is just to use the fact that I have multiple pawns. So we'll go here and just push it like, like this. <coughs> you do want to pay attention to the past pawns that your opponent has. But I was noticing I have multiple opportunities here to capture it. And so I wasn't concerned. And black has no way to stop this plan. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. B7. Uh, okay. Let's get the queen. Make sure it's not a stalemate, but I see places that the king can move to. So I'm not concerned about that. Now I'm just looking for checkmates. Okay. So that was a good example of how the opening kind of failed, right? Our opponent played a very solid option of giving back the piece and we we found ourselves in trouble there right so let's let's take a look at the game review and we played it pretty well so let's uh let's see so yeah the, the engine doesn't like the halloween gambit so that's why that was one of our mistakes but this was obviously intentional i wasn't blundering the knight I, I knew what I was getting into, right? Uh, D4, E5. Yeah, Queen E7, I felt like it was weird. But the idea of sacrificing a piece back is, is a good idea. Now, there's different ways that I think black can usually do it. And I don't remember what the best way is. Like, a lot of times you bring the bishop out to B4. And at some point, you give up one of your other knights. Um, I can't remember right now, but... That's what our opponent did here, which was smart because they end up with just a small advantage, you know, the extra pawn, and we don't really have any any way to attack like we would have liked to with the, the Halloween Gambit. So that's what we saw here. Okay, so like I mentioned, when, you're, when you find yourself in a position like this where your opponent has outplayed you in the opening, don't panic. Don't like do some crazy stuff. Oh, I have to do something wild. No, like just play normal, solid moves. That's what I did. I castled. I just put my queen and rooks on good squares. And then we started to see our opponent fall apart, right? Like right around here, we started to see some of these tempos uh, on the queen really started to pay off. And then bam, I don't know what happened, but our opponent kind of just fell apart. I guess they were trying to 
think about a checkmate here or something. I don't know. But uh, and all of a sudden we're back in the game. So hope that helped you guys. And then again, at the end, you know, use your king makes makes the game much easier when you use your king. That's what we did. Came all the way up and over, grabbed the pawn and got the victory. So 1406. Thank you guys for watching. And um, I'll see you next. Oh, I have to update 151. 151 wins. See you guys next time. And thank you, Kaldas, for the uh, for joining. All right, guys, take it easy. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.